In this video, we got a large ant colony with countless queens all laying eggs. And I'm going to feed them a mouse. If these ants accept the mouse and what the outcome means for the colony, you'll find out in this video. Enjoy! Right here, next to my ant paradise vivarium, is my Tetramorium bicarinatum colony, about 5000 workers strong. And as you can see, there's a lot going on with them. Each of the 5000 ants has a role, a place and its own tasks. Some take care of the queens, some of the nest expansion and all these little white dots, those are the ants' eggs, larvae and pupae. Of course, these also need to be cared for, and that's not so easy. When was the last time you took care of 5000 individuals, bathed them, fed them and put them to bed? Not an easy task, but together and with good communication it all works out, and the colony has become so successful and strong, precisely because of this cooperation. This also includes the many queens. Unlike what is commonly assumed, many ant species can have more than one queen. But what does it actually look like outside the nest? Here we find a lot of running from one point to another. But actually, less than expected, right? You would think 5000 ants would be more, but you can also see how spread out they are. And that tells us that the appearances can be deceiving. They are all looking for something. Food. As soon as even a beetle shows up somewhere here, it's immediately detected and all the ants sound the alarm. Then there's no holding back. 5000 stomachs need to be filled. And I'm not even counting the ants additional social stomachs. And since we are responsible for this food, I want to show you something. Something you've probably never seen before. Because I have a plan. And it involves a mouse. I know that some of you might feel your heart sink right now. Small and young animals are cute to us humans and we have a different emotional connection to them than to adult animals. And sometimes it's really hard to distinguish what's food and what's friend. Because what's food to one can be a friend to another. Here we have this little baby mouse and the ants will probably decide that it's food. I myself have no final conclusion on where I stand in this matter. As far as I am concerned, it is healthy for ants to give them a variety of food. And that's what I'm about to do. But feel free and actually encouraged to give your own opinion on mice feeding in the comments so we can start a little discussion on the pros and the cons. But how do we feed this mouse now? In the main arena, we can't observe as well as I'd like. Accordingly, I've prepared a small experimental arena here. Connecting it requires a bit of skill and I always disliked this part. The ants aren't alarmed right now, but escaped ants are always a risk. For the connection, I also got these transparent connectors and attached a small tube. This way, we can perfectly observe the ants at every step. Then I added a small staircase, which the ants don't really need, but it makes observing nicer and the first ants already started exploring the new element. But now we still had to prepare the new small arena. Carefully, I placed the mouse in the arena, sealing its fate. It was only a matter of time before the ants would find it and I couldn't say what would happen then. The ants circled the opening of a new arena and the smell of the mouse must have also spread through the tube into the old enclosure. Step by step, the ants dared to venture closer to the new arena and I was grateful for my choice of transparent tube connectors even though focusing the camera was quite tricky. The mouse lay right near the passage and as soon as the ants explored the new arena, the food should be found quickly. The first ant reached the stairs and carefully searched everything. It had scented something, but it didn't let its curiosity overwhelm it. The closer the ant came, the more ants also found their way to the mouse. Soon it would happen. And when it did, you could immediately recognize the moment the mouse came into view. The mandibles opened and the mouse was inspected directly. Slightly difficult to film, but still visible, was how the ant circled the mouse and assessed its size. It looked everywhere and nibbled a bit here and nibbled a bit there. The immediate surroundings of the mouse were also explored. Are there other enemies here? Is there anything here to bury the mouse with to hide it from others? Are there probably 
family ants from the same colony here. A worker must consider all of these before reporting the finds to the rest of the colony. A young queen serving as a worker was the second to explore the mouse. She too was interested. After all, the ants had never seen anything like this before. Did the ants even know they could eat this? And how would they know? Again and again, ants found their way to the mouse and one ant actually began to bite pieces out of the mouse. This seemed quite difficult however, as the skin was probably a bit thicker than the ant could penetrate. But it didn't let itself be deterred. Ants are usually not very strong individually, but it's the numbers that count. And in numbers, they move mountains. At least. I wish they would, because frankly not much else happened here. But that was my fault, not the ants. As I discovered, I had pulled the wrong plug while rearranging and the heating mat that usually keeps the ants warm was off. Consequently, the ants were very cold and very inactive. Luckily, I noticed it quickly and turned the heating mat on. For an extra boost, I put a small extra heating mat under the first arena and we were ready for attempt number two. This one also has other changes. As you can see, I also move the water and sugar water feeders into the extra arena. This way, I want to speed up the process of a mouse being found. And with this crowded arena, it won't take long. And just so you know, on the left is sugar water and on the right is regular water. But without further ado, here it comes. What you've been waiting for. Mouse number two. Hardly was a place in the arena when the ants pounced on it. This time it didn't take a second and the ants had acquired their target. There was no hesitation this time. At least that's what I thought when I saw the ants exploring the mouse. But something wasn't quite right here. Not as I had expected. The ants, this time too, didn't seem to quite know how to handle the mouse. Almost as if they had adopted my moral dilemma as well. I had expected them to start driving their mandibles into the mouse everywhere, but somehow that wasn't the case. The mouse seemed somehow alien to the ants, more like a large object, like a stone than something edible. I saw hesitant first nibbles on the mouse's tail. I had expected the ants to separate this from the mouse first, as it's soft and only thinly connected. A single ant seemed to have the idea to detach something here and ignored all the other confused ants. A plan was forming here and I could feel it. All around the ant, other ants began to search with their mandibles for points that were easy to work on and would yield under their small but steady pressure. Interestingly, no ant climbed on the mouse, but all the more on the glass pane right next to the mouse. I wonder why that was. Perhaps the hesitation is also because the mouse is still cold. You buy them frozen and I let it unfreeze, but I also did not want to let it dry out before offering to the ants. They were also busy crawling through the tubes. And if you look at the tail again, you can see that the plan is starting to unfold. I also think that the tail is most likely to reach an acceptable temperature for the ants because it's so isolated from the rest of the body. Accordingly, the ants might be more interested in it instead of walking around the two cold mouths. 10 minutes after I put the mouse in the tank, more ants were at the tail helping the first ant. Gradually, I assume with rising temperatures and confidence, the ants climbed onto the mouse. What was new for the ants was also new for me and I observed everything very closely. Often it also seemed as if the ants were first licking the mouse and absorbing the juices that were released during the unfreezing process. These should also be somewhat nutritious. Meanwhile, an ant trail had formed all the way to the mouse. I found it very exciting to observe something like this because there hasn't been anything like it in my ant collection before as the setups usually aren't large enough. Accordingly, another novelty that makes us richer by one experience. Something we have in common with these ants who are processing a paw for the first time in their lives. More and more, it seemed as if this mouse would be completely conquered by the ants in the near future. And as I wondered how long it would take them to detach the tail, I saw the first piece of mouse making its way towards the nest in an ant's mandible. So far, the ants have found the mouse more or less by chance. Now that the samples are being brought into the nest, everything will be alerted and the signal to swarm will be given. 
In the meantime, the first ants tried their luck on the ears. I suspected they would be able to get through the skin there easily. Currently, however, they had a little success. The tail on the other hand looked somewhat dismembered and it was like a bet with myself as to when and how it would be processed. It was absolutely amazing what happens while you briefly look away. What do you think? Will it go by pieces or will it be detached whole? A particularly large piece has been taken here and it seems to me to be heading more towards piece by piece. But that remains to be seen. The information about the food has definitely spread and the ads hardly stayed in the first arena anymore. Everything that could somehow walk now streamed towards the mouse and didn't want to miss anything. A find like this could feed the entire colony for several days. Now it's been about seeing what the ants will do. For this, I've set up my time-lapse setup and prepared it to document the entire process. Because the way this looks here, the ants won't give up. Almost 20 hours have passed and it's just so incredible what we are seeing here. The ants have completely hollowed out the skull and eaten almost all the flesh from it. Looking at the ants as they ran around inside the skull bone and streamed out of the openings, I feel many things. Morbid fascination, disgust, but also admiration for nature and its ways. I knew the ants were effective, but I hadn't expected this. They exposed everything and by the looks of it, they were far from finished. The paw was also completely removed. And if you look at the whole thing from above and from the other side, you can only see then the full extent. The ants were already inside the mouth, getting out the very last bit from between the ribs. In a way, it didn't surprise me either. After all, every little bit was valuable to the colony. Only the speed was astonishing. And as you'll notice, the tail is also completely gone. But I had expected that. If anything was eaten, it was probably that. On to day two. Now it was even clearer. The ribs were visible from all sides and you could even see into the mouth. The skull was completely bare and you could see all the lines of the bones. Seeing into the skull and watching ants run around inside it would have also been good material for a Halloween episode. It seemed as the ants were now concentrating on getting the very last bits out of the mouse. The flesh around the ribs was already dark and probably hard, but the ants were numerous and still interested. On to day 3. Shortly before the end of the third day, the ants had made further progress and you could already see that the ants would stop at nothing. Even the hole in the skull grew larger each time. That they even processed bone was new to me. And you could now see completely through the mouse to the other side as if there had never been organs in the first place. Gradually, only the skeleton remained. Dark flesh was still visible in some places, but not much was happening anymore. Three days have now passed. Where do we stand? Well, the mouse is gone. Or is it? Because somehow its skeleton is still here, but all its flesh is gone. Nevertheless, the ants don't seem to want to stop. I can imagine that they are still chewing off the very last remnants everywhere and don't want to waste anything. However, there wasn't much left to get. Unless they actually chew away the entire bone, which I doubt. Many ants also seem to be more interested in searching for further food and if anything had been overlooked rather than the mouse actually still being processed. Time to remove the mouse and take a closer look. Here we have it. All that's left of it. The tail is gone, the paws, the skin, 
the organs, and the interesting lines on the skull are completely visible. It paints a picture of how nature recycles things. Just as the ants have eaten this mouse here, they and other insects would have also eaten deceased animals in the wild and returned them to the cycle. The ants, in turn, are eaten by other animals and these animals by others. And even though it can be a sad topic, there is also something comforting about not being completely lost. I'm still not entirely sure what I think about feeding the mouse. But one thing I can say for sure, the ants gladly accepted it. I'll turn on some light. And these white dots are either eggs, larvae or pupae and thanks to the mouse, these will now be raised into adult ants in no time at all. These will then go hunting again and continue to provide for the colony. I was already worried about how the colony could possibly explode because this is a lot of food for the colony at once and it's already showing signs of being hungry again. Tetramorium bicarinatum is known for forming very large colonies, which can easily reach into the hundreds of thousands and I'm here to document the whole process. I would appreciate a thumbs up, subscribe, thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!